Hey everyone, I'm here today to talk about print setting speeds, but first let me say I was lucky enough to come into 3D printing relatively late, just six months ago. So I got the benefit of all the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and testing that a lot of other YouTubers had done before me. And that really allowed me to, to expand and go forward from a pretty you know high level starting point. So what I'm talking today about is what's accepted as as conventional wisdom I guess on printing speeds on an Ender 3 or other FDM printer is that you know print slow slow is better the rationale behind printing slowly on especially on miniatures is you want the previous layer of extruded plastic to cool enough so that when your next layer of extruded plastic is coming down on it you're not smushing it deforming it you know it has to be basically cool enough that it's solid above the glass temp. Now, most people in the community use the Fat Dragon Games profile or some variation of it thereof, which is what I also used for a long time. But, and I was getting great results. I'm in, believe me, I'm in no way knocking that profile at all. It's an amazing profile and I, I see a lot of great results from people using it or from using the Cree Awesome. And but I, you know, I started experimenting because I started thinking about something. I'm not sure, and I'd love to give credit. I'm not sure if I read this somewhere or saw someone mention it in a video. So if someone can tell me where this came from, I'd, I'd appreciate to credit the person I got the idea from. Someone had mentioned that when you get into smaller areas especially, if, if the print head is moving too slow, the heat from the nozzle can actually melt the plastic that had been extruded before and actually cause it to deform. So in a sense, you'd be better off printing faster. Also, I thought to myself when I'm thinking about that, because that all, you know, both things made sense. Going slow made sense. Going fast made sense. So I thought, what the hell? But then I thought about, like, a uh, terrain piece also that you're looking at here, where the head is going to travel around in a huge square, especially all the bottom layers until you get to the very top. There's so much distance and time before the head gets back to a place it's already been to put the next layer down. What could be the harm in going fast? You know, unless, in, until you get to so high a speed that it causes your machine to jerk around and, and causes problems with your extrusion, then to me it seemed like, well, you know, the faster I can print, the better. I get more stuff printed, and it shouldn't really affect print quality to go fast. So I started experimenting with upping all my speeds. And yeah, like I said, I was a noob, so I was experimenting with all the different settings in Cura, things I didn't even understand what the hell they did. But speed was a little easier to understand, so let's focus on that for today. I'll get in, into some of my other settings at a later date. This is only about speed. So if you look at the, what I'm showing you, all these terrain pieces were uh, made at a really, really, printed at a really, really high speed, and they came out amazing. I mean, just as good as if I had printed them at a slower speed. I, I've printed things at a slower speed, and I don't see any real difference. And coming up in the video, I'm going to show you some side-by-side. -side. Uh, I did some experiments where I printed the Fat Dragon Games profile, and then I printed my super high-speed one on complex little miniatures. So again... Uh, don't look at the miniature here, that's off my photon, but again, this tent is printed at an extremely high speed on my Ender 3, and I think it came out pretty great. So, even in tiny spaces, it sounds confusing. If you print really slow in a tiny space, well, like let's say a, a, a little weapon part going up in a little spiral or straight up tip of a sword. If you're printing super slow, your hot end nozzle is going to be sitting by the plastic, you know, remelting it all the time. Likewise, if you print it really fast, you're going to be laying down plastic that's on top of plastic that's still melty and wet. So I don't know on a really super thin part, I'm still out to lunch on what might be better. Um, but I, I've been getting great results printing fast. This stable is printed super fast and I'm gonna show you a close up of one, close up high res photo of one part of that stable uh, just so you can see how it printed out at a super high speed. So it doesn't seem like I'm sacrificing any quality by printing really, really fast but I'm printing faster. So even if the quality is only the exact same or even a tiny, tiny minor step down, it's still a benefit. All right, so here is, on the left is my super fast printing profile. On the right is the Fat Dragon Games uh, mini profile. So this is at a little bit distance, so you can see that both figures look amazingly good for FDM. It came out great. Now here's a super close-up. This is almost under a microscope now. So I'm not gonna argue which is better. Again, mine on the left, Fat Dragon Games on the right. I'm, I'm not arguing quality. I'm just saying, let's call the quality equal for now. If they're equal, the one on the left again here is mine. If they're equal, mine is printing at a much, much higher rate, even at a, at a lower resolution, which I'm gonna talk about in another video. For now, let's just talk about speed. So at this speed, uh, and here you can see the print time on the Fat Dragon Games is an hour and 46 minutes. 
Now the exact same one on mine is 56 minutes. So mine is printing almost an hour faster for the exact same size figure. And mine even has a raft for better adhesion. So again, here's mine on the left, Fat Dragon Games on the right profile. Again, their profile is amazing. You, you use it, no worries, it's going to come out great. But if you use mine, it's going to come out great and it's going to be a lot faster. Again, mine on the left, Fat Dragon Games on the right. So let's look at the actual settings so we can see what, what we're talking about, where I've sped it up to get that, to recapture that time. So on the left is Fat Dragon Games profile. Their print speed is 34 millimeters a second because, again, conventional wisdom, slow is good. My print speed is almost double. You can see it's 60 millimeters a second. And on terrain, by the way, I go faster. I, I, I bump that up to 100. Uh, the infill speed for them, 34 seconds. 34 millimeters a second. Mine is a whopping 100 millimeter per second. It's infill. You're not going to see it. So I don't even, does mine look better or worse? I don't even know because I can't see it. Wall speed. So the wall speed, this ostensibly is the most important one because it's the outer layer, the outer wall that you see when you're looking at the model. And they have 17. So again, conventional wisdom goes super slow. It looks better. Mine set, again, almost to double that at 30. And you saw the results. My wall didn't you know, look any worse. And again, in my opinion, it's actually a little bit better. But again, that'll, that's a subject for another video. So inner wall speed, they're at 34. I'm at 60 because again you, it's an inner wall you're not going to see it so as long as it's not really messing up I don't care so I, I want that fast top surface skin speed here here we're close because on that top surface skin uh, I do think you, you you know going a little slower there helps because I don't think my nozzles gonna be sitting in one place too long and melting what I've done before although I probably should you know what I'll make another video where I jack that up and see what happens actually and the top and bottom speed again uh, you know there, that's for adhesion, I want it to go slow. Uh, you look at support speed, I'm way faster on printing my supports because I'm ripping my supports off the model. Why do I care if, let's say slow does work better somehow. I don't need my supports to print slow and look good. I just want to rip them off. I, I want to make sure they don't fail, of course. Obviously, the key thing in anything is you don't want anything to ever fail. So, but mine are not going to fail at 60, I don't believe. So, you know, look at, you can look at the rest of the settings here, but I think the key ones that are saving me almost an hour in printing that same little goblin, and obviously, if, you know, on, on a bigger print, you're going to save way more time. So you can look over these settings at your leisure, but I think the most important ones or the, or the thing that I'm trying to show in this video is that you can print really fast and still get really great results. And I do think it, it's that, uh, first of all, I think the, the plastic cools a little faster than we all think it did. Like, uh, you know... I don't, you see from my results, you don't see that the head's moving back so quickly that's going over a layer of plastic that's still melty and then ruining it. I think it's coming out great. So I think the, the balance is, and I don't think that I've actually found the exact balance myself yet. I'm ex still experimenting. But you want to find the fastest speed you can print without sacrificing quality. And I just think, contrary to what the conventional wisdom is out there right now, people should be experimenting actually with faster speed times. Because the faster speed times, at least up to what I'm using, seem to give equal results. Let's just say for now, let's say it gives equal results. Uh, even if it's a tiny little bit worse or a tiny little bit better, it doesn't matter. If it saves you a lot of time, I, I, you know, for me, it's definitely worth it. I guess each person will make up their own mind. So anyway, that's the video for today. This is just on speed. I am going to be sharing the rest of my settings in a longer, probably way more boring video. But hopefully it will be of interest to people. If you want to achieve the results you're seeing me achieve on your Ender 3 or other FDM printer, because uh, my settings do start to vary from the profiles that everyone else are using. And again, just based on my own experimentation, I can't say it's empirical data or anything like that. But I, I have to go with what my results tell me. So I hope you liked the video. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. Please watch my other vids. And again, thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.